Welcome to episode 12 of Real Life Real Gospel, sponsored by St. Paul Lutheran Church and School in Boca Raton, Florida. This week, we're going to be discussing service as we go forward, um, which I know is is going to be a difficult discussion for us to have, especially given the circumstances that uh, have been going on this week, that this podcast is, I guess, being released into. Um, but we are, we're going to keep following the Red Letter Challenge, and this week in the Red Letter Challenge... Um, we're talking about service and normally as if you've heard the show before, you know, normally I accept topics from listeners and I discuss whatever those topics might be and what they look like in the reality of a Christian life, because that's our goal is to look at, at kind of what Christ says, what God says we should do and how that plays out in our regular daily everyday lives. Um, and in pursuit of that, I do, I try to avoid academic language, I try to avoid theological language, because I think a lot of times that isn't helpful. And normally, I, I do take topics from you, the listener, but um, in an effort to kind of be with the church and, and walk us through the Red Letter Challenge, I'm sticking with those topics for now, but after the Red Letter Challenge is over, I will be going back to listener submitted topics. So if you have any topics that you would like to submit, I would love to have them. You can you can message me. You can email me at vicar at stpaulboca.com and get at it all those ways. Or you can leave a comment on whatever platform you are listening on. Um, but as we go forward in this episode, I, I want to be very honest and transparent and say that this is a difficult time to talk about service. Because when we think about service, we typically think about service as going out and doing something and accomplishing something like uh, going to serve at a food bank or a homeless shelter or doing something for people who we're in contact with face to face. But with this, this pandemic that we're facing right now with the social distancing guidelines that we've been given, service like that is difficult, if not impossible. But service can also be something much simpler, which is something we're going to dive into today. This can be things like prayer, like calling a friend or a neighbor just to check in and see how they're doing, to talk to them for a little bit, especially if if we're all so isolated. That phone call can really mean a lot. Even just a text message can mean a lot. And that isn't all that serving is in the long run. Because what I don't happen is I don't want to happen is I don't want you to listen to this podcast and think, oh, I can just serve by calling people and praying for them, which is true. But then after this, this pandemic has passed and after the social distancing guidelines have, have faded away, I don't want you to take this as an excuse to not go out and serve in all those ways we traditionally think of service. But I I want to keep in mind that there are, there are ways of service besides that which we typically think about. And you might ask, why does this matter? Why am I bothering to listen to a podcast about service with everything that's going on right now? And I guess the first and foremost thing that I want to point out is that it's called for by scripture. We, we are told, we are instructed again and again to serve our neighbor, and there are no qualifiers on that. We're not told, serve your neighbor when times are good, or when it's convenient, or when things are nice out. So we are just, we're called to serve. Uh, Another reason why this matters is, really, it's just for a sense of normalcy. And I I hope you have, uh, I guess, a habit now of listening to these podcasts on a regular basis, and I wanted to make sure we kept doing those. On Thursdays, we're going to keep putting them out on Thursdays just to give you something Hopefully that's a, it's a little closer to normal than what a, a lot of the rest of the world is doing right now. And uh, finally, it's because while the service things we might be doing now are a little smaller, in times like this, those little things can mean so much more than even some of the bigger things during a regular time. For example, if you're if you were to call your neighbor just to check and see how they were doing, check and see if there was anything you could do to help them. In a time like this, you're going to get a lot of reactions like, I can't believe you would take time out of your day, 
out of all the struggles that you're facing to check on me. Even though it was just a phone call. So that's, those are all kind of the reasons I think this is worth talking about and this is worth talking about right now. Because it is a great time to be the church. It really is. So with that, this is, uh, this is Real Service, Real Gospel. Again, uh, episode 12 of Real Life, Real Gospel, and I'm your host, Josh Laborious. And as we go forward, as we always do, we're going to jump into some scripture and the first scripture lesson that we're going to jump into is 1 Samuel 12, 20 to 24. And Samuel said to the people, Do not be afraid. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside after empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are empty. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake. Because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. And I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider the great things that he has done for you. And that's all from 1 Samuel. So some textual notes on this. At the very beginning of this passage, Samuel's saying, Do not be afraid. You have done all this evil. And all this evil that he's talking about is outlined in the previous verses where it talks about the people of Israel following after other gods, turning away from God, asking for a king because they said God wasn't enough. We want a human king over us. So... In the midst of that fear and fear of punishment for all of those things that they have done wrong, Samuel says, do not be afraid, which is really cool because it speaks to the mercy that we talked about last week. And if you're curious about what that discussion was, I would encourage you go back on whatever platform you're listening on and listen to episode 11 on forgiveness. But as we go forward, they, Samuel kind of addresses this question of what now? We're forgiven. God is merciful. God is our God. He is before us again. What now? And what now is first and foremost an assurance that the Lord will not forsake his people. And then Samuel follows by saying, first of all, it's a sin for him to stop praying for them which is something we're going to get into a little bit more. And then he instructs them to fear and serve the Lord. And then it closes with a a reminder of saying, remember all the things God has done for you. And I think this speaks to us pretty profoundly right now. Because you have people asking questions like, why is God letting something like the coronavirus happen? Why is he letting all of these people struggle and suffer and all of these shortages go? Why? Why doesn't God just eliminate it? And if if we look at that, that line of reasoning... That train of thought in context with this, with remembering how great the things God has done for us are, it kind of makes us seem a little ungrateful. And the example that I thought of to connect this with was actually if you take kids to a theme park. Like when my parents would take me and, and my brothers when we were younger to a place like Whitewater, and then we would want like snacks or or meals at the theme park, which if you've never been to a theme park... Uh, Dinner there can cost almost as much as, well, getting into the park in the first place. So, we'd already been given this great gift of being able to go to the theme park, being able to go to the water park and have fun all day with our family. And then we were asking for more. And then we got upset when we didn't get more. And I think that's the same thing. If we remember all the great things that God has done for us, and then we say, well, why doesn't he also do this? It, it seems almost a little ungrateful for us to put in, be putting these demands of what we want, what would be convenient for us on God. So those are just a little te- a little bit of the textual notes on where this, this passage from 1 Samuel is coming from. And then what I want to get to next is 
why we're looking at this. And I think primary is because before we serve others, before we go forward in that, we have to recognize that first is we serve God. We serve God first because that is the response for everything God has done for us. You see, because every breath we take is a gift. The ability to listen to this is a gift. The, be able, the ability for me to be able to record this is a gift. Every single thing we've been given in our lives is a gift. And if we recognize that, and if we recognize the even greater gift of our restoration of a relationship with God in the midst of our brokenness, the, the only response we have is how do we thank God? And that's the instruction we get here is we serve him. And I think in, in this text, we can learn from both Samuel and the Israelites. You see, we can learn from Samuel because we are all leaders in some capacity, whether that's among our friends or among our families, among the people we work with, what, whatever the case may be, you are a leader in some capacity, just like Samuel was, and you are called to pray for those who you care for. Samuel says, it would be a sin if I stopped praying for you. It would be sin against God. And I think we're in a very similar position. We, we have all these people in our lives who need prayers. And one of the ways we serve God is to pray to him about these things. So, and that's how we can kind of identify with Samuel, but we can also really easily identify as the Israelites, as followers that have been called to fear and serve God. And that's what I want to go forward with. We are called to serve God as a response, not as a requirement, but as a response to what he's done for us. So as we go forward in this, we're going to talk about each of these individually. And what I want to start with is this idea of sinning against God by not praying for people in our care, for people who have asked for prayer, whatever that looks like. You see, because God has instructed us to pray, this is one of the ways that we serve him. And we ought to be building each other up. That's another way that we serve God which is something we're going to talk about more as we move through. Um, but what Samuel is getting at here is that it's, it's a sin against God to not pray for our neighbor, which sounds like a weird thing. But this gets at kind of this idea that we are going to talk about in just a couple minutes, that God frequently puts himself in our place. So as we serve others, we also serve God. So as we fail to serve others, we fail to serve God. And as we go forward, he then comes to address the Israelites. And as he addresses the Israelites, what he gets at is serving faithfully with your heart. And this, thing, this is the idea of serving with a joyful heart, with a faithful heart. You see, we aren't just serving because we have to. Like I mentioned before, we don't serve to somehow earn something from God. We serve as a joyful response for everything he's already given us. So what does this look like? This is, this is the difference between kind of dragging your feet and jumping right on, in between showing up to serve and, and kind of being very hesitant and being the last person to do anything and then jumping right in where you are joyful, where you're excited to get going, where you're excited to go serve. And I think another difference that you can see in, in this is that it's this idea of serving in a glamorous position versus doing what needs to be done. Like if you go into somewhere to serve and you want to serve in a particular position because you want to look good versus going to serve in a position because that's what needs to be done. That's how service needs to go forward. And the reality of all this, the reality of this passage from Samuel is that we don't. We fail. We don't pray for our neighbor. We, we ask for other kings and we put other things in authority over us that aren't God. We don't serve God in his interest first, and that's the reality. That's the, the sinful reality that we live in. But the real gospel here is that God forgives us. And in this passage, we see him promising to never forsake, to always be with his people. 
And it's a call to remember all of the incredible things that God has done for us. And I think, especially in difficult times like this, that's a great practice. To go back over our lives and think of all of the things that God has done for us. And those are both great reminders at this time. That God has promised to be with us and that we can look back and remember all the things that he's done for us. And with that... With this idea of we are serving God because of all the things, as, as thanks for all the things he's done for us, we go into John 13. And in John 13, 12, it says, When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So the textual notes, first of all, this is Jesus speaking the entire time. And this follows after the story where he washes the disciples' feet. And I, I want to just take a brief minute, if you heard my sermon at St. Paul this week, and you've already heard this a little bit, but I want you to think about the people whose feet he was washing. Like, he washed Peter's feet, and Peter denies him several times. He washed Judas's feet, and Judas betrays him. He washed Thomas's feet, and Thomas doubts him. He, he washed the feet of tax collectors and sinners. He served people that didn't deserve it. And he served like that humbly. So if we think he he instructs us here to serve as he has served, how do we do this? And I think the first point to take out of Jesus' service here is a service of humility. It's not a glamorous position. Washing people's feet was not an ideal way to serve. That was what needed to be done. That was a humility. Uh, The second thing I want to pull out is a willingness. He wasn't instructed. He wasn't asked to serve. He just stepped forward and served. And there were no qualifications, as I just talked about, there were no qualifications on the people he served. And I think this really applies right now. If you are listening to this podcast right now in 2020, in the midst of the the pandemic and all the social distancing and all the struggles with that, I think this really applies right now because Our service right now is not going to be glamorous. You're not going to get great pictures you can show off to all your friends on Facebook or Twitter or or Instagram or whatever. You're not going to get great pictures to show off what a great person you are. It's not going to be glamorous service. It's going to be simple things like calling, checking in, doing grocery shopping for someone who's more at risk, prayer. And none of these are big, flashy, glamorous services. This is humble service. And no one's going to tell you or demand that you do these things. It's going to be a a matter of your willingness to go forward. And it's in in the same way that there were no qualifications on the people Jesus served. We're not looking for like the ideal person to go and serve. We're just serving people who we are in a position to serve. So as we, we move through this gospel, the reality is we, we want to be celebrated and seen when we serve. But c- God calls us to a service that's more humble than that. To serve those even though they can't do anything for us. And what I want to say is some, something a lot of people encourage is to serve. Because when you serve, you get like this good feeling inside. And in reality, our motivation for service shouldn't even be that. It shouldn't even be so we feel good. We're, we're simply serving because by serving others, we serve God. And we should require no more motivation than that. And in reality, when we serve, we should be no more excited about our own service than we, when we see someone else serving people in need. Because the important part is that we're caring for our neighbor. So it shouldn't really matter if it's us or someone else. We should celebrate them both equally. And that is just a testament to how humble our service should be. 
And I think this is a struggle. The reality of this is that it is a struggle. But the gospel here is that Christ has served us in the most incredible ways. For free. He didn't ask anything for us. We didn't have to qualify ourselves first. He served us in his death on the cross and in his ministry on the earth. And the gospel is that we are served in that way and there's nothing we can do to disqualify us from that service. There's nothing we can do to separate the relationship we now have with God. And there's something, there's a freedom that comes with that. A freedom that there is nothing we can do to separate us from God. But as we speak of that freedom, as we reflect on that freedom, I want to look at Galatians 5. Which says, you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. So the textual notes for this is this is another one of the epistles. This is a letter to a church written who is struggling with things like this. And I think this is something we can identify with because we do have this freedom. And in times like this, in times of panic, there is this temptation to metaphorically devour one another. This freedom in grace that we have, and that's what he's talking about, this freedom that we have in Christ, that nothing is going to separate us from him. Um, it tempts us in this way. There's, there's this temptation to say, well, if I'm going to be forgiven anyway, it doesn't matter what we do. And that's not what we're called to. We're called to something better than that. And when we started this podcast, we started all the way back in 1 Samuel. We looked at that it all starts with serving God. And how do we do that? We do that by following his law and loving our neighbor. We serve God by serving our neighbors. And we serve with love. And what is the practicality of this? In this specific time, in our specific circumstances, what is the reality of serving our neighbor with love? And I think the first way of this is listening to the officials. And some of you listening to this might not want to hear that, but Serving our neighbor with love means even if there is a chance that the things we do might lead to a a greater suffering for those who are vulnerable to the disease, we should avoid that. And that means we're not talking our way around the officials when they say, you know, only meeting groups of 10 or all these other advice and guidelines that they're putting out. We, We genuinely listen to and do our best to uphold them because... We, we trust that that's a way we can care for our neighbor. I don't care what conspiracies you think are afoot, what, what narrative anyone is pushing with this. Do our best to take care of our neighbor, even if it's something that we, we think might be silly or might be unnecessary. We, we do it to serve. And then beyond that, what else can we do? We can do things that actually demonstrate care for our neighbor. Because that has to where, be where all of this comes from, is a, a genuine care. So before we go forward in any service, we, we have to start with considering how do we actually care for our neighbor. And this can reflect very easily into things like calling or texting or video chatting and doing these things to check up on our neighbor. Um, grocery shopping, helping people who are struggling in different ways all coming from the genuine care and the genuine thought of how can I best help my neighbor? So the reality is we want to serve our way and there's a temptation to serve our way and we have this freedom because we want to look better through our service. We want to be comfortable in our service and we're we're called to more than that. But the, the comfort I have and the comfort that I want to close discussion on this passage is That while we are called to serve others, God also calls others to serve us so we can rest in that. You see, because God's priority is us, his people. He loves us. He does care for us. And he's going to work in this world to reflect that. I mean, how cool is that? So as we come to this episode of the end of this episode of Real Life, Real Gospel, I kind of want to summarize it all and say we are called to serve And we serve God first. And we serve God by serving our neighbors. And serving with genuine care and love for our neighbors. And the real 
the real service in all of this is that we reach out as best we can in genuine care. And the real gospel is that no matter how well we do, no matter how beneficial our service is or how many times we fail, God still loves us. God promises to never forsake us. And God is leading other people to serve us in our need as well. So with that, this has been the 12th episode of Real Life, Real Gospel. I have been your host, Josh Laborious. If this was helpful to you, and I hope it was, and you think that other episodes of, of different topics might also be helpful, I would encourage you to subscribe. And then you'll know when we're releasing episodes, when we're, when we're doing content and stuff like that. And comment. If you have something you want to hear me talk about, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. And as far as the platforms for listening... I just want to remind you we are on Spotify, on YouTube, on Google Podcasts, on iTunes, and on Podbean. So any way that you listen to podcasts, we are there. So with that, this has been Real Life, Real Gospel with Josh Laborious. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.